We have been living on the road full time now for going on seven years. And if you look here, this is our last three years of travel. Our first year in 2022, um, our trip was fairly small. The next year is bigger. And then this year it's this size. So 14,000 miles. What happens, you know, when things go wrong or you want to change things or, you know, it's kind of like, what if? Hey, welcome to Tigner Adventures. My name is David. And today we're going to be talking about Trip Wizard. Now, if you're new to RV Trip Wizard, uh, you can use this little QR code right here. Save you 25% off your first year subscription. And if you already are um, a subscriber to Trip Wizard, then please feel free to, you know, leave some comments on questions that you have. And we'll try to answer those questions in future videos. Today I'm going to go over a few things that may help you out as far as planning a trip and also what happens when you're in the middle of a trip and things go wrong or don't quite go as planned. So to start with, I thought what we'd do is we'd look at Trip Wizard by RB Life. Now one of the cool things about Trip Wizard is the ability to set defaults. Now the defaults are really important because these things we don't want to have to put in every time we create a new trip. And so by setting up these defaults, um, we eliminate all that excess work that we did. But we can also change it at the time that we're creating a new trip. So I just wanted to go over that really quick. I'm just showing you here. This is the actual login screen. You go to uh, tripwizard.rvlife.com and it brings up this screen. This is on your web browser. It could be on your phone. It could be on your um laptop it can be on your tablet it doesn't matter just some type of web browser somewhere brings you up the screen and you go ahead and log in after you log in then over in the top right corner of the screen you'll notice a little person here and if i click on that i have a drop down menu here that shows me defaults among other things so if i click on defaults these are the defaults that are used every time i actually create a trip so every time I create a trip, it pulls these in automatically. I don't have to put it all in there. But again, you know, when I do create the trip, I can actually change it if I want to. So if I was going to use a different vehicle, I'm using my car instead of my motorhome, whatever the case may be, I can make those kinds of changes. But if we look here, you'll notice that for general information here, um, I can set it up so that every time I go back into Trip Wizard, it automatically loads my last trip. Um, I can... And I've, in this case, I say no, um, I can stop uh, detail display preferences. So that means that if I hover over something or, you know, I put my uh, cursor on there, uh, my arrow, uh, that it will um, either pop up the information about it or I have to click on it. And I've said I want to click on it because I don't want, as I move my mouse around, for all these things to keep popping up on my screen. So I just say click on stop uh, details. Uh, the map resolution, I use the high resolution. And then the units, of course, is imperial for me because I'm in the U.S. and I don't uh, know metric. <laughs> so, but if um, you are, you know, in a country that is using metric, then you can choose metric here. Uh, that's the general tab. If I look at this RV info, this is where things really get to be pretty nice. Now, if I have a newer rig, I can actually look up all the details and have it automatically fill this stuff in for me. But in my case, my rig is 30 years old. So I'm filling this information in automatically or manually, I should say, automatically myself, manually to the system. So um, the height of our rig is 12 foot one inch. And it's nice to even, you know, fudge that a little bit. It's better to be a little bit higher than a little bit lower. And so just be careful with that. Uh, the length of our rig is 46 feet, three inches, and our weight is 25,000 pounds. That's uh, including our car and everything. So I have all that on there and I'm carrying propane. So those are very, very important things to be, you know, keep in mind when you're planning out your trip. Uh, those characteristics right there will make or break your trip cause you lots of problems whatever the case may be and we're going to talk about a few of the things that this has caused us problems with um, or you know 
as far as routing and things that, to, you know, why it's so important to use them. So um, over here on the right, it's uh, talking about what kind of fuel I use. In my case, I use gas and our capacity is 75 gallons. I want a 25 gallon reserve. I get five and a half uh, miles to the gallon. I'm getting a lot better than that lately, but you know, I just wanna, again, I'm playing it safe. Um, and I'm using that with this next thing, which is fuel warning. Um, when I turn that on, it tells me how far I can go before I'm going to uh, run out of gas. And it actually tracks the gas mileage from each stop. So I can see how much gas I have left at each stop and know where I need to add another gas station. So I put everything into my map. I put my all my camping spots in there. Most places only deal with camping spots. But this software allows you to put anything in there you want. So I put all my camping spots in there. I put all my gas stops in there. I put in all our quirky stops, places, other places we want to go, uh, shopping places we want to stop at. Say, hey, we want to stop at uh, Costco and just get food. You know, I put that in there. So everything is on my map. And, you know, so that makes it, you know, easier for me to navigate when I'm going to take off for the day. I know exactly everything's all pre-planned. I know what I'm going to be doing. So this allows me to look at that whole thing. And no matter where my stop is, I can see how much fuel I have about left to get to the next place and where I need to get gas. Um, over here on the um, next tab is routing and driving. This tab is uh, things that you want to avoid. So we want to avoid toll roads if we can. We don't really want to pay tolls if we don't have to. Um, sometimes that causes issues too because some places we've got routed have been very difficult uh, to maneuver up and down hills and things like that. Um, a little steeper you know, going up and a little steeper going down compared to a nice freeway that's a toll road. But you know, if you want to save money, that's a great option. Avoid highways. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but if you were really wanting to just stay on back roads, uh, you can do that. Avoid ferries, tunnels, unpaved roads. So you can put all that information in there. And on the right here, we are, um, as an average, we're saying that we are going about 50 miles per hour. Uh, so that, based on that information, it can calculate out about how long it's going to take us to get to the next destination. If you've ever used a GPS of all the other kinds of GPSs, you say, hey, I wanna go here to here. Well, if the speed limit is 80, it's calculating that it's gonna take you, you know, going at 80 miles an hour, this long to go from point A to point B. By putting this in here saying 50, it calculates out my distance based on me going 50, not what the posted speed limit is. Eventually, they all get kind of in sync with you the way that you're driving not necessarily just based on the speed it's just that when you start out it's giving you you know whatever information so so this is information here that we have the other thing is a driving radius uh, we have done some videos to show you how to use the driving radius i typically leave that turned off and if i want to use it for you know calculating out certain things then i'll just turn it on while i'm you know to use it for it that particular time frame, and then I turn it back off again. So those are those defaults. Um, expenses, you can keep track of, you know, putting some different default expenses for like camping, uh, meals, uh, miscellaneous type expenses, average cost per gallon of your gas or your fuel. And, um, you know, you can put those in there. In this case, I just leave those all at zero. Um, I don't normally use that too much. When I actually create a trip, then I will add in you know what the price of gas is average at that particular time um, anyway that's our defaults here we said we just say save those defaults and those defaults are now there every time we create a brand new trip those are automatically there now i mentioned at the first of this video that this year's trip is 14,000 miles you can see here this is our 2024 uh, trip and down here at the bottom, this is our final numbers, basically. Uh, we're going to be out 216 nights is the uh, total time that we're going to be uh, traveling. And we have got 196 entries on this map that you see on the right-hand side here. So we have everything listed there that is dealing with this particular trip. And the reason we do that is because when I get up in the morning and we're going to travel today, I like to bring it up on my phone and I just select, I, ha I see a whole list of things that we're doing today. So places that we're stopping, whether we're getting groceries, getting gas, uh, stopping at a quirky stop, whatever, it's all on there. 
and I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to be searching out things while we're driving along. Uh, this works really well if you were a single, um, you know, solo uh, traveler and you're just by yourself, then you've already got everything planned out ahead. You know, in our case, you know, we just don't want to deal with it. You know, uh, it takes two people to drive this rig. <laughs> so it's me and my wife paying attention to the stuff while I'm off wandering around looking at things. So, you know, we don't want to be trying to figure that stuff out, you know, while we're traveling. We like having it done ahead of time. And this this software allows us to do that. And we have really put this to the test on a few things. And we've come up with a few problems that have, you know, we've had to, you know, create, you know, fix the problems basically, and uh, turn in some, some reports and things. Cause I don't think most people probably do this or at least in this magnitude of a, you know, trip. And so we're really putting Trip Wizard through its paces. And I have to tell you, that overall, I am pretty impressed. You know, I get irritated on certain things because I run into uh, problems, but I figured out how to get around them. And then, you know, I turn in a service, you know, entry, a service call into a support for them to look into that to see how they're going to fix that and things like that. They are coming out with changes constantly and upgrades and things. And so it's, it's nice to have a company that will work with you and that you can correspond with and, you know, give the information to and things like that. So I'll just tell you right up front, one of the issues that I've had is that because I have so many entries here, again, I have 196 entries and I'm always changing them almost every day, even though we're doing this, you know, every time we stop and we're staying the night and stuff, I look at what's going on tomorrow. Sometimes we add some more entries. Sometimes we delete entries. Sometimes we change our route. You know, you can do all that very easily. We can just keep moving things around all we want. And so it's not like you're doing a hard set plan where this is it forever. <laughs> you know, it's in hard and stone. This isn't that way with this software. This software elixir makes changes all the time, but the problem I've ran into is um, there's been a couple times where it's got lost. Uh, when I've gone to do my navigation, it basically says, okay, you're going to the next point and oh, hey, you're there. And it's like, no, the next point is 100 miles down there. But for some reason, it thinks I'm here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just got confused within, you know, the GPS coordinates. So I'm going to show you how you fix that really quick. Um, because I figured out how to do this thanks to the um, help of another uh, subscriber that mentioned how he did things. So I just go in here to this, um, little wrench up here and I go into my trip settings and I actually copy this trip name and I go ahead and then modify it to say backup. And I'm just going to make this this copy that I have here right now. I'm going to make it a backup copy. And so I'm just changing this to be backup. And then I'm going to put the, you know, some number in here. So 124, for example, this is my 124th backup, whatever. OK, I'm just going to name this so it's unique. And then I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then you'll notice up here on the top left. Now my my uh, trip is called summer 2024 complete backup 124. Uh, so if I go back in here now, then I go down here to the bottom left here. It says copy this trip. And so I go ahead and copy this trip and I put in my new trip. I put in my name that I've always been using. I just want to keep it the same and I say copy. So that goes through and makes a copy of the trip and creates a whole separate one that I can now manipulate or whatever, but I don't want to do anything with it here. All I'm going to do is just say save. I'm just basically saving a copy that becomes my working copy, my new one. And by doing that, during that process somehow, and this is what I've turned into support, is it cleans up all those pointers and everything like that and everything starts working again. So I'm only having, I haven't tested this on, you know, smaller trips to see if it has this issue, but you know, we're dealing with a lot of information. So if you have that issue, this is how you can fix it. And it still continues on. And so we just keep on using it. It, it works great. Um, and, you know, eventually they'll figure out, you know, what isn't being done there or, you know, come up with a better setup there. But uh, right now that works really well that way. And the thing that I want to be completely transparent with you is I have tried a lot of different uh, software packages and nobody is perfect. There's not a programmer out there that can make perfect code, period. You know, and I've been a programmer for most of my life. So I understand how this whole process works. So it's important to 
be able to come up with workarounds if you do run into something, but to have a company that will take the information that you've got and work with you to resolve the issue. And that's what RV Life does. And so that's why I keep using it. We've now been using it for six years just because of that. Um, and it's changed a lot over the six years and it just keeps getting better and better. Now, if you look at my map here, I've just kind of drilled into this one little area here. I just wanted to point out some issues here. Um, when uh, I was talking about um, at the first of the video, what if, you know, what if you're traveling and you don't use this software? You know, I've ran into a couple of friends, you know, people that I've even met. And I said, for example, did you know there are tunnels <laughs> that you cannot have propane on board and go through those tunnels? They don't. They don't know that. This means that it doesn't matter whether you're a van or you are a travel trailer or a motorhome. Anything that has propane, you are not allowed to carry propane bottles through tunnels in Baltimore, for example. And, and I know this because this is the route that we went on right here. But uh, that's why in the setup, you know, the default settings and things, it asks, do you carry propane? And we say, uh, yes, we do. And so if you look here, this little section right here, usually you would drive through this road right here, just straight across. But this is going through a tunnel and things, and there are some signs right in this area right here, if you look, that say no hazardous material allowed in the tunnel. And they um, you know, are deeming propane to be a hazardous material, and it says no RVs allowed. So that means you, if you drive in there, you're in a van and you're carrying propane and you get pulled over, uh, that's gonna be a major fine. And so it's much better to know this ahead of time than to be driving down the freeway and all of a sudden see this sign that says, uh, what? You know, and it's like, oh, where do I go? Where do I go, you know? And, um, and so in this particular case, this has routed me around on this freeway that goes around the city. The other thing that I mentioned is I did not want to pay toll, okay? And apparently from after you get around here and you get onto this 93 going across here, there are tolls going across these bridges here and on these, on these uh, freeways. And so it's routed me on my way out of uh, Maryland. It's routed me this direction. So we drove out through here, this nice little scenic thing. It really didn't add much to the trip. So, I mean, and we're not in a hurry, so we didn't mind that at all. Uh, but it routed us out through here. We did some stops over here, checked out this bridge and stuff. And we went down here to our, our boondockers welcome. And so uh, let's look and see what, you know, we've been traveling so many places that, uh, oh, that's Delaware. So we are going to Delaware. So we wanted to get one night in Delaware so we can put that little on our uh, map that says, hey, we stayed a night in Delaware. So we drove all the way around there to Delaware. And then on the way back from Delaware, we headed right back through again. Again, we can't go through the middle here because that's the tunnels that uh, no propane allowed, but we, it did allow us to come down this way because there was no toll coming back in towards the city. So we drove that way around and then we drove out to uh, Pennsylvania is where we were going from there. So. Um, you know, the mapping system, it automatically takes that into account. Those are things that you need to be aware of, but they know. In fact, there was um, some areas that uh, we were looking at doing where um, they, and I think that's here in Baltimore too, where something hit a bridge and damaged the bridge, and so you couldn't go across that bridge anymore. And um, RV Life sent out a notice to us saying, hey, by the way, this has happened. They've closed down this section of the road. So make sure that you pay attention to that within your mapping software. Make sure you have the most accurate, you know, downloaded maps before you go traveling these areas. So they're always on top of it. We don't have to worry about it. Now, this next little section I wanted to show you was this is some place we um, ran into an issue in uh, Pennsylvania. And we we're going to stay at uh, a friend's place. And when we went to, um, on our way there, they said, oh, by the way, go down here and disconnect. So we went down to this Dollar General, disconnected our rig. And if you look right here, it shows us entering off the highway, going down to their spot right there. Um, well, come to find out, we were over here disconnecting our rig. 
And so then we drove, I thought, well, I'm just gonna go, this road is right next to the Dollar General there that we were at. Uh, so I'm just gonna drive down this road, go through here like this and come around. I started to drive that way and the routing software says, um, recalculating, you know how it does. <laughs> Sometimes we drive the thing nuts, but it says recalculating and it says, okay, well then um, drive down here and go over here and you know go around here and back around here. And it's like, what is that thing doing? I'm just trying to get to this point right here. And so I said, ah, forget that. So I just drove down here and drove around right to here. I forgot to look at the rest of the message. Actually, I think he sent it a little late, so I really wasn't paying attention. It says, do not come in this direction because there is a covered bridge there and you won't be able to get across it. So if you see here, this was like, oh, there's a covered bridge here. So I had to back all the way back down the road here and then drive out this way and come back around the correct way. So, you know, the software, it was bound and determined not to send me down that road because it knew there was an obstacle there. And if you know anything about Pennsylvania, I can't remember how many low or uh, bridges, covered bridges and things they have, but um, our friend was telling us that there's a lot of them around there. You really need to pay attention to that as you're driving around. So you can't just arbitrarily go certain places that you want to when you have a rig that's over 12 feet you know tall um, you know because of these different issues like this so that's where having this software and making the plans ahead of time really does you know um, help out well hopefully this has been a little helpful for you there's a few things here that we've gone through that can really cause you some issues if you have issues with certain things, remember you can always send an email to support at rvlife.com or go onto their website, rvlife.com and just open up a service ticket. They are really good to get back with you. So I do appreciate you uh, coming along with me today and uh, hopefully uh, we can come up with some more of these things. If you have certain questions on certain things, then please make some comments in the description below because we can uh, take that information and uh, I'll make another video based on, you know, answering those particular questions. So anyway, thanks for coming along. We'll hope to see you on our next video. And if not, then we'll see you down the road somewhere. So you guys take care. Bye.